Okay, so, mm, hello everybody, right? Here we are in Lightroom CC 2015, and um, of course, that's just come out in its latest incarnation just a handful of days ago, and everybody's all over the place singing and, pra and, singing and dancing and praising it beyond belief. And uh, yeah, it's all right. Um, <laughs> no better than Lightroom was before, but not in my opinion, not really. But you know, there's one thing above all else that I keep seeing touted around on the internet as one of the great best things since sliced bread, and that's the dehaze filter um, inside the new versions of Lightroom and um, Photoshop and Camera Raw. And, uh, yeah, it's okay. It does its job. But I can't help but think that oh, it's been a bit over-publicised and folk are going to sort of get the wrong idea about it and think they've got to deploy it on everything. And to be quite honest with you, it's, um, <laughs> it's not as bloody brilliant as you might think. And I'm going to show you why. Um, I'm also going to show you in another couple of videos why I think it is good. But you need to temper what will come later um, with this. And obviously wherever you see demonstrated on the net, um, it's always used on landscape images. Um, so here's a landscape image. So the image on the left, yeah, strangely enough, seems to be quite a good seller for me but it's will the nuclear power station um shot from Semlin bay on anglesey and uh, the power station's probably what mile mile and a half away from the uh, front element of the uh, lens on the camera and the lens on the camera is a zeiss 21 millimeter f 2.8 which is ooh, my microphone slipping off my head so i'll just sort of uh, rummage that around and uh, that's better now it's not slipping down um because i'm poor you see and i can't afford one of them dirty great big freestanding things so i use a headset um but where was i um before i started talking crap um yeah ah, mm, ah back to this shot and uh yeah, we shot in a Nikon D4. <laughs> not the best lens, uh, not the best camera body for shooting landscapes on. But anyway, I digress. What I just want to do is um, ping this up to 100% and uh, wait for this image to load up. There we go. So um, this is the finished image, and this is the actual raw file from which this image is derived. Um, now, why it's got a blue cast on it, blah, 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 we're not going to go into, even though, well, I might as well tell you, it's because it's been shot with a, um, a Lee Big Stopper, which is mega blue, and uh, on the raw file, I actually tried to sort of negate the blue cast, and then I thought, well, pff, I'll leave it on, it actually adds a bit to the image, in my opinion, and seemingly in the image buyer's opinions as well, but there you go, who am I to reason why, mine is not to reason why. Um, now I'm waffling again. Gee whiz, I wish I could stop waffling. So, now consider I said to you that the distance from the power station to the camera is a mile, mile and a half, something like that. And considering that this is a 21mm lens we are talking about. Um, mm, I mean, just look at this. It's, it, it's epic, the amount of detail that's sitting here in this uh, image. It's such distance phenomenal resolution um even on a 16 meg sensor um fantastic lens not quite as fantastic as the one i've got the hots for which john willis at calumet will tell you all about um because <laughs> keep bludgeoning him with a big iron bar over the price um i've got a hankering for a 25 mil zeiss f2 <gasps> beautiful piece of glass but anyway i'm digressing and waffling again now we can see here we've got this phenomenally high resolution detail considering the distance away from the camera but you know i mean at the end of the day we're we're viewing it at a hundred percent 
Now, what I'm going to do is switch out to a loop view and uh, switch to the raw file and we're going to take this up to an 8 to 1 view and uh, so we can see everything that's going on and we can look at our edges okay so these are the actual edges in the of the distant object and uh, yeah i mean if we look at this um, ventilation chimney here from this low building on the power station um we can see there's the chimney but look how much of a bleed we've got across these edges this vertical edge here and up the top here so i mean if we're looking at this now at sort of pixel level each and every single one of these square pixels that we can see you can think of them as representing individual photosites on the sensor so this is where you sort of circle the confusion of your sensor and the airy disk of the aperture and lens combination that you're using comes into play now i mean what have we got we've got one two three four five six lines if you like of pixels um that are confused around the edge so um basically those lines of confusion are to to do with the resolution of the sensor so we could safely say that if we jump from a 16 to a 32 meg sensor these six lines would only take up three lines you get the picture yeah it's really simple so if we were to shoot this image on say a d800e or a nikon d810 at 36 meg these edges would be a lot more distinct and wouldn't bleed quite so much because these six lines here would actually reduce to either three or two yeah now your problem starts with the dehaze filter when it comes to these edges so if i just switch over into the develop module and um, where do we have to go um dehaze here it is so if we look at this image now and stick in this eight to one view and then we go and turn the dehaze filter up you see what it's doing it's consolidating the edges yeah take the notice of the fact that yes it bumps up contrast and it bumps up saturation what it does it consolidates the confusion in these edges and basically if we consolidate them you can see now these six lines have now been taken down to two and so what's it done it's overemphasized the haloing if you like of these distinct sharp edges and this is your problem if you go and deploy this dehaze filter yeah i mean yeah we've gone and deployed it at plus 82 so it's a bit aggressive but all i'm doing is i'm just showing you what the dehaze filter does um obviously down here it doesn't do it as much but it's still consolidated this edge which remember was six columns of pixels wide and now it's just sort of what two and a bit three and it's overemphasizing these indistinct edges that your sensor records and so what does it look like if we take it to a one-to-one -one view and then we crank it back up again it gives you the effect that it's over sharpened and yet we're not adding any sharpening to it but at the end of the day that's what sharpening is because if we take this back out to um, zero and negate the dehaze filter come back up to um, an eight to one view and uh, then go to sharpening and watch these edges again increase the level of sharpening yes it's now increasing the grain in the image as well um but you can see what it's doing it's it's consolidating these blurred edges again and it's creating pretty much the same effect so what i'm saying to you is this do not deploy the new dehaze filter inside of lightroom or photoshop or camera raw willy-nilly you really do need to look at your images 
at above 100 percent just to check that your images are not suffering any negative effects from the deployment of a DA's filter so there you go and he's top tip number one DA's filter it's okay it's very good in places but just be careful what you're doing okay we'll see you soon